when I want to drive somewhere, take a nice hike, snap a few photos, and send them to my friends, I don't use a separate GPS, fitness device, digital camera, and laptop. I can do that all on my smartphone, right? With one integrated device. In my design work, when I need a processor, I don't build my own out of a bunch of old 7400 series discrete logic gates. There, integration really has its benefits. So when it's time to do power conversion, why on earth would I cram a bunch of discrete analog components on my board like some kind of sixth grade science fair project? This is the age of integration, after all. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. The era of integration and power conversion is here. And my guest is Raymond Jiang from Vishe, who is going to talk with us about microbuck and micro brick modules that combine leading MOSFET technology with innovative control design and advanced multi-chip packaging to give us a truly integrated power solution. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Micro Buck and Micro Brick from Vishe. Hi, Raymond. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you so much for having us. We're talking about power conversion with Micro Buck and Micro Brick. But Raymond, I don't think I've heard of Micro Buck or Micro Brick before. Where exactly do they fit in the power conversion ecosystem? And what kind of voltages are we really talking about here? Yes, in our power conversion ecosystem, the end point of the load are usually those electronic chips that are requires a stable DC power supply. These chips can be CPUs, SOCs, memories, displays, hard drives, you know, anything you can think of. Just to give an example, to power those chips, we need to go through basically two stages of conversion to deliver the energy from the AC outlet to the final point of load. So the essential first stage is the AC to DC conversion that establish an intermediate bus like 12 volt or 48 volt. Then the second stage converts this DC bus into a more refined low DC power supply for the end application. So MicroBuck and MicroBrick products are Vichet's latest offerings in this market to address essentially the second stage conversion in this ecosystem. Both microbug and microbrick are single-phase synchronous bug converters that convert a high DC input into a low DC output with very high current capability. The DC input we're talking about here ranges from 5 volt all the way to 72 volt. The output voltage can be as low as 0.6 volt or up to 12 volt. The microbug and microbrick families are capable of delivering up to 40 amps of upper current with this kind of conversion rate. So it seems like I'm talking about power conversion more and more these days. Raymond, what kind of challenges are we really looking at? And what kind of trends are you seeing pushing these needs? Yes, that's a very, very good question. So in nowadays, cloud computing, big data, artificial intelligence, 5G mobilities, autonomous driving, they are driving our world and civilizations into a completely new era of communication. So as a result, the power ecosystem is now being fundamentally transformed into a operation like a main workhorse to deliver essential energy to those crucial IT infrastructures. So the main challenges to our industries are fivefolds. First of all, the ever-increasing power consumptions in our data centers, you know, those big data farms that received data from our cell phones and then transmitted them into different places. To address this, we essentially need to improve the overall power efficiency in this conversion. So that's the first challenge. We forecast that the power consumption used by those data centers could be tripled in the next decade. The second challenge essentially is the cooling. The more power you consume, of course, the more heat the system will generate. So cooling becomes very, very challenging and also the cost associated with cooling. So we need to deliver a superior product with the best thermal performance to address the cooling challenges we have seen. The third one, of course, are those CPUs, so silicon on chip SOCs are becoming more and more power hungry. We have seen CPUs that can consume close to 400 watt for each single CPUs or even more. So 
essentially they demand a very fast, low transient that is very, very hard to meet. And we have to develop products that can meet those transient specs uh, to make sure that all those chips are working properly. Number four, of course, is the space and the, the real estate. The board areas that is allocated for the power conversion now is becoming less and less because we have more other content, other silicons on the board occupied more space. So the only way to get out of this is to keep shrinking our packages and to keep increasing the overall power density of the power delivering system. Last but not least, reliability is always a everlasting topic in our power industry, especially when you talk about high power conversion, high voltage, high current type of applications. So with all these things happening, the application environment becomes tougher and tougher every day. But we cannot take a step back from our commitment to the reliability. So essentially, we have to provide a more reliable system, a more reliable power conversions to the industry. And to answer all these challenges, Vichy has only one word to answer these. The word is integration. So that will give us the answer to all those trend and challenges. Okay, let's talk about that power integration. But how have we gotten to where we are today? And how do the micro buck and micro brick fit into this timeline? Yes. So Vichy has come a long way since, we should say, the early 21st centuries to become the leader in this industry in providing integrated power solutions for the industry. If you look at this chart, the evolution actually begins in early centuries. Uh, before year 2000, we're still in the era of discrete solutions with individual MOSFETs all over the place. But ever since that time, Vichy has been on a journey of integrating more and more silicon content into single package that greatly boosts the level of power integration. So as you can see here in timeline, in 2006, we introduced our first VR power product. So essentially VR power is what we call a Dr. Moss type of product that integrates a driver IC and the two MOSFETs into one package. So that's the very early stage of integration. As a matter of fact, this series of product has been very successful for Vichy, and we are now one of the biggest suppliers for this type of product. Then in 2009, Vichy, we entered a new era of providing and developing micro buck family that offers a complete solution with a driver IC and two MOSFETs co-packaged in a very compact packages. Of course, micro brick is a brand new addition to the Vichy family. We introduced the first product of Microbrick two years ago in 2018. And it really boosts us into a higher level of integration with both passives being inductors and silicons, the MOSFETs, the ICs into one single chip. So what all are we talking about when it comes to power integration? Yeah, so the key ingredients for power integration comes from uh, multiple dimensions, multiple disciplines. First of all, you must have a cutting edge, you know, the benchmark, the best MOSFET technologies. And as we all know, Vichy has been a market leader in this area for many, many decades since the Siliconics era 40 years ago. Uh, secondly, innovative IC design expertise would bring a significant value into our product. As we all know, MOSFET, they are just you know, muscles, and we need the brains to operate those muscles. And IC designs brings a significant value into our product. Uh, thirdly, the company who does this type of product must possess an advanced multi-chip packaging technology that we can manufacture and support in a reliable and cost-effective way. Number four, you must have a top-notch quality control system and a strong customer service infrastructure to support our global customers in a global demand. Last but not least, you must have the business mentality that is nimble and flexible to tailor-made your customized product solutions to fit different customers. And all in all, Vichy as a company, we have all these important characteristics and capabilities to answer the call for integration. That makes sense. So let's talk about the microbuck family. What does it really buy me as an engineer? Yeah, there are four important qualities of microbuck products for a design engineer or power engineer. So first of all, of course, the foremost important thing is the efficiency. So microbuck products offers the highest efficiency in the industry, thanks to multiple reasons. First of all, we have the latest trench tech, MOSFET technology 
that offers the benchmark performance in the industry. When we say benchmark performance, we talk about lowest RDS on and the best switching performance. In this way, you save both conduction losses and the switching losses altogether. So high efficiency is the first and most important criteria of the product. The second one is the high switching frequency. If you compare our micro product against a discrete solution or a competition, the benefit of using micro buck is that enables you to operate at much higher frequency. When we say higher frequency, we're talking about one megahertz or even higher frequencies. Usually it's twice as fast as the discrete solution or our competitions. Third point is about the transient performance. So if you look at our micro buck families, all of them employ a very advanced control architecture called constant on time that delivers super fast, low transient boost and saves lots of output capacitors and reduced overall solution size. So it enhances the power density of your solution. Last one is thermal. Again, thermal is always challenging for the industry. So with microbuck advanced packaging technology with multi-chip solutions, we can deliver the best thermal performance with the lowest temperature. So can you give me more detail on how microbuck compares with a discrete solution? Yes. So this is a typical application comparison of our microbuck family against a discrete solution. So here you can see eight curves. Four of them, they're in solid lines. They are microbuck. It's the SIC 462 product. The dashed lines, they are discrete solutions. So overall, as you can see here on the curve, comparing to a discrete solution, overall, we can improve up to 7% on the efficiency, which transfer into almost the 50 percent saving in the overall power losses. That's impressive. Now, one of the challenges you mentioned earlier was thermal performance, which is definitely an important aspect here. What is the microbuck thermal story? Yes. So this slide compare our microbuck solution against a competition solution with same power capabilities. So as you can see, the thermal difference based on the thermal camera capture is significantly different. With the same power delivering capabilities, we are almost 25 degrees cooler than the competition solutions as clearly show here. That thanks to the advanced packaging technology and advanced MOSFET technology, it's like lowest RDSR, fastest switching performance to deliver the best thermal performance against our competition. Nice. So what kind of voltage and current options do I have with the micro buck? Yes. So this slide give you an overall picture of what we offer as a micro buck family. So the Y axis is the input voltage. The X axis is the output current capability. So as you can see, we offer very wide range in terms of input voltage and very wide range in terms of output current. So we can go from, as I mentioned earlier, down to 5 volt all the way up to 72 volt in terms of input voltage. And output range, we can go from 3 amp all the way to actually now 40 amp is our highest output capability products. Okay, so let's talk about the top section of your graph first. What if I need something that is in the 4.5 to 60 volt range? What kind of benefits will I see here? Yes, so with that kind of input range up to 60, we have a family called SIC 460 family. So essentially, this is what we call a high voltage microbuck DC-DC converter. What this product family offers are, it's very versatile. You can have a very wide range input from 4.5 to 60. And we have basically a three different level of product. They are compatible in the same footprint. The lowest current capability is 3 amp. The highest one is 10 amp. So the efficiency, as you can see here, we can achieve about 98% peak efficiency with this type of product. And it's a highly configurable. You can configure the switching frequency from 100 kilohertz all the way to 2 megahertz if you choose to minimize the size and to maximize the efficiency with different configurations. And lastly, this kind of product offers a very robust solutions and very reliable solutions by providing cycle 
cycle by cycle, current limit, protecting the output voltage from being stressed with an over voltage or under voltage. We also provide a power good indicator to signal the system whenever the power is being regulated. Lastly, we also have the over temperature protection that protect the silicon when the temperature goes above let's say 160 degrees, which is dangerous to operate. So overall, this is a very high density, high efficiency, high switching frequency solution that we offer to the market up to 60 volt application. So typically these kind of product, you can use them in the industrial robotic automation type of scenarios and also telecom where 40 volt is very popular for the input. Also battery management type of systems as well. Okay. So what if I need a little less than that? Say topping out at 28 volts. What do you guys have for me here? Yes. So this is what we call low voltage microbuck family, which is SIC 430 theories. It's very similar to the previous 460 family. It's just had a smaller package. The package is a four by four package. Of course, the inside MOSFETs are now mainly 28 volt MOSFETs to optimize for a 12 volt or 24 volt type of DC bus. But from the feature perspective, it is very similar to 640 theories, which offers constant on-time type of control, programmable frequency from 300 kilohertz to 1 megahertz, cycle by cycle protections type of things. These kind of products are being widely used in server applications for, with 12 volt bus, artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning, telecommunications, and also industrials for FPGAs and SOC type of products. And what about 20 volts? Yes. So 20 volt product, which is our 450 series, this is really a product family that are optimized for server application, data center, server, desktop type of typically 12 volt input application scenarios. The unique feature of this 450 series is that it has a digital communication bus called a PM bus. Essentially, it's I2C communication protocol with some features added, but this PM bus feature now is becoming a very popular requirement for all the data center and server applications. So we incorporated this type of communication into this 450 series. Again, this series has three different flavors in terms of current. The lowest current is 15 amp, and we can go all the way to 40 amp in the same footprint. So you don't have to change anything on your PCB layout. You simply replace the low current version with high current version, and you're good to go. So this is packaged in a 5x7 by, by 0.75 millimeter high package. So very, very dense package to address the 40 amp type of application. So Raymond, earlier you mentioned multi-chip packaging. Can you walk me through what that looks like? Yes. So this is a very interesting picture to show you a more detailed internal construction of our micro brick products. So we can read it from right to left. So on the most right-hand side, you can see a big piece of metal, which is copper. So this is called lead frame. So basically, this is like the ball of the human body. So everything sits on the lead frame. And then the next stage is the three silicons. As you can see here, we have the high side and the low side and the controller IC. They all sit on this lead frame. And then they get wire bounce out. And then the next stage is this little square shape of a clip. So this is a copper clip. So the clip essentially interconnects the two MOSFETs all together and brings them to the outside world. And then the inductor essentially is mounted on top of everything. And then the whole package is molded. The benefit of this kind of construction is that now you can really use the inductor effectively as a heat sink because Essentially, the inductor sits on top of everything and it absorbs heat generated by the silicon and then take it to the outside world. So this becomes a very effective thermal solution to dissipate high power out of this small package. Cool. So what kind of options do I have with Microbrick? Yes. So as I mentioned, Microbrick is a relatively new member of our family. Currently, we offer three Microbrick products from high voltage to low voltage. We have SIC 967. That's a high voltage micro brick that supports up to 60 volt. The output current is about 6 amp. Also, we have two products that address the low voltage input, which is 28 or 12 volt input. So the SIC 931 is the 20 amp micro brick that can support up to 
30 volt input voltage. The SIC951 is optimized for 12 volt input with maximum 25 amp output capability. And that one also has a PM bus interface to go with the package itself. So it's more like a micro brick version of the previous 451 type of products. All right. So let's dive into some more detail about these. What about 24 volt designs with micro brick? What kind of benefits will I see here? Yeah. So again, the benefit is first of all, the efficiency. Thanks for the highly integrated solution. We can now bring the efficiency to a high level and also the integration of the inductor together with the silicon itself enables us to operate at a much higher frequency. As I mentioned earlier, a conventional micro buck family without the inductor integration, it can run somewhere around 800 or 1 megahertz. But with the integration of the inductor, now we can really achieve very, very high frequency up to 1.5 megahertz in the same time achieving a high efficiency at around 95%. Nice. Now, can we look at 4.5 volt to a 24 volt design? Yes. So this is our SIC 951 product. So essentially, this is the PM bus version of Microbrick, optimized again for 12 volt input, mainly for enterprise type of server application data center. This really is a very compact all-in-one type of design. It's greatly simplified the design effort for the engineers. So essentially, you don't have to do anything. You just drop this module into your board and you're good to go. Just add a few input output capacitors and you're good. All the compensations, they're internal. So it greatly reduce the development time of our customers in the same time provide highest efficiency highest power density and the best reliable solution in the market i want to emphasize that the size of this micro brick product the dimension is six millimeter by 10 millimeter by three millimeters thick so this is basically the smallest micro brick module with that kind of power you can find in the market it seems like you guys have a lot of options in this space. What if I need a little help choosing the voltage regulator? Uh, can you guys help me here? Yeah, so essentially there is two aspects of how to select the product. One is commercial aspect, as you can see here. We are in partnership with Mouser, as you can see. So if you go to this Mouser link listed in this presentation, you can see a whole list of Vichy offerings for micro buck and the micro brick we down into voltage current features packages so you can always go there and find the right product for you from commercial level that's super helpful now no design truly starts without an eval board what kind of boards do you guys have in this realm Yes, so this is a selection table for all the EVMs that we currently support to our customers through Mouser. You can order them on the Mouser website with the listed price and all of them they're released. So just go to the previous website that we have shown you and just make your choice. And usually the board can be shipped out in a week or two weeks time frame. So what if I need some help simulating my next design using a micro buck or micro brick? Can you guys help me out here as well? Yes, there's two aspects of selecting. One is the commercial side, as I just covered. The other one is the technical side. So as an engineer, how do you easily design with our micro buck, micro brick families? You don't have to come to Vichy support every time that you want to generate a new design. Now we offer a online design and simulation engine through Transim. So essentially, this is a simplest based online model that you can run. You can easily go to the site. So I don't have the site listed here, but you can easily Google it by typing PowerCAD Vichy. That first result is the link to our online tool. So this essentially is the first landing page you will see when you click on that link. So what all can this PowerCAD tool do? Yes, so this one gives you some insight view of what you can do with this online simulation or design tool. So there's four major factors. First one, of course, you can do the selections. You can enter your requirement, input range, output range, current frequency, all those kind of things. And then you can make a selection guide out of the first page. And then once you're done with that, you can click the design button. And then the design button brings you into the next level of schematic generation and the bomb generation. So essentially, this is your reference schematic 
to begin with. You can play with the values of the resistors, the capacitors, the inductors, or the parameters on a screen on the line. And then you can click the simulation button. The simulation essentially has two portions. One is a simplest based simulation to show you the time domain kind of simulation with transient performance, normal steady state operation frequencies, waveforms, and all those waveforms in a time domain. You can also analyze in the AC domain, which gives you the bandwidth, the loop response parameters. So these are the electrical type of simulation. And also we provide something that other competitions don't do is the efficiency and thermal analysis. So if you want to know how much power loss my design would incur, you can run that and we can tell you point by point at what level you will consume how much power, what is your efficiency. In the same time, you can also estimate the junction temperature of each silicon inside the package to give you a global view of the thermal mapping of the entire system, which is very, very cool. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Raymond. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Vishay. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.